The thing about recreational fear is it's everywhere. People do many different things to derive pleasure from fear, but it's also poorly understood. So we need uh, systematic scientific investigations of this phenomenon. Recreational Fear Lab is a research unit that is put into the world to conduct scientific investigations of recreational fear. It's a little bit paradoxical that people would want to seek out fear for fun. But our theory is it's a kind of threat simulation. It's a way of playing with fear and learning something about the dangers of the world, but in a playful, pleasurable context. So while you're watching a movie or playing a VR game in our lab, we will measure skin conductance, your heart rate, uh, respiration, and basically what we're developing is emotional recognition systems. From that, we can try to get at teaching a computer how to recognize the exact emotional response that we're interested in, which is, of course, the fear response and the enjoyment. Horror is an ideal medium because it's really designed to elicit high-intensity emotions, which makes them easier to be measured. So all the data that's coming out of these studies, we can use it to push the frontier of the next generation of horror experiences. There is what we call the sweet spot of fear, which is finding that spot where you're maximizing enjoyment in relation to your experience of fear. So in 2020, we tried to ask that very question. And the study took place at a commercial haunted house, which included these classic frights like jump scares, zombies, you know, all, all the good stuff. So the guests will fill out questionnaires, some will have pulse tracking, and there are surveillance cameras in some of our rooms looking at the behavior and tracking of these guests. That study indicated that there was an inverted U-shaped relationship between fear and enjoyment, so that enjoyment seemed to be maximized when fear was not too high, but neither if it was too low. And we found that there are three basic types of horror fans. The first type was the adrenaline junkie. These people said that they enjoyed horror for the feeling of suspense and the rush that they get from feeling afraid. However, only a small subset of horror fans actually fell into the adrenaline junkie category. Another dimension of horror fandom could be classified as the white knuckler. The name deriving from the white comes across their knuckles and they clench their fists, typically in fear. They don't necessarily love the adrenaline rush itself. However, they do report feelings of personal growth and helps them learn about themselves. The final group of horror fandom that we discovered is what we've called the Dark Copers. Now, these people use horror fiction as a way of working through and dealing with difficult feelings like anxiety and depression. They do enjoy the adrenaline rush, much like the adrenaline junkies, but they also feel like they've learned something about themselves, much like the white knucklers. So this research suggests that horror is not just about getting a rush. Instead, part of the appeal of horror is its capacity to offer a safe place to play with fear and anxiety and work through those difficult feelings. But we know that even at younger ages, children love being chased by a parent, pretending to be a predator, or engage in various types of uh, risky play activities, such as cycling downhill at high speeds. And there are many more types of recreational fear activities, and children at various ages might engage differently with them. So it may be that uh, people actually need a kind of fear inoculation, a little shot of playful fear, to learn how to cope with fear in, in real life. Um, and there also may be commercial applications if some of our findings can be used to develop even more pleasurable horror experiences. Which is the project we call Apex of Fear, which is tailoring the game to the individual player's uh, phobias. The program will tailor to you because of your psychophysiology and being able to measure exactly how you're feeling at a given time. And that's kind of the goal of the research we're doing here is having a program that are that are able to tailor to exactly you and making sure that it's it's not too intense and it's not too boring is is kind of the dream because that would allow horror to open up to everyone and not just the thrill seekers. But really there are so many things that we can do and that we want to do. We want to do more haunted house studies. We also want to observe behavior in other domains. I think we've managed to show that there is something here that needs to be investigated in a short period of time. And the lab has grown and we have attracted new people, excellent people. Um, and there are so many research questions that still need to be investigated. So my vision for the future is uh, growth and expansion.